Hello everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at how to easily fade in and out of items. This is going to be a short but nevertheless highly requested one. So let's buckle in your seats and let's get right into it. In front of me, I've got a Reaper session with just one track and one item loaded onto that track. 123,946,715 country rock and roll audio coffee short one item. That is a rather lengthy name, but we don't care. All those methods that I will show you right now are working on an item basis. So you cannot just fade a track out. You will always have to fade an item out and it will only work with audio. So if you're working with media at the moment, I would highly recommend you to render it out as audio first before you can actually fade it in and out. Now, let's listen to the beginning of this item by pressing the space bar to play. That's fine. Now I will quickly show you how to fade into this. So fading in means that at some point you want to reach a volume maximum, which is the volume that your track or your item or your piece of music or whatever it is that you're editing right now, we continue to play at, but it should actually start at a volume of zero. So basically at the lowest possible volume and then continuously fade up to that volume. So let's go a little bit further into this item. Bar two, bar three, bar four, bar five, bar six. Let's say here. That is where we want to reach our highest, our peak volume. We will have to make sure that we've got an item selected. Sometimes in specific situations, if you don't have an item selected, Reaper will not know what actually you want to fade in. So just to make sure, always press Shift A before actually fading in or out. One item selected. And now that that is done, we can press Control Alt I, which would be Command Option I on Mac, to automatically fade in to this point where we are currently at. Press Control Alt I on Windows or Command Option I on Mac. One item faded into cursor. If we now go back to the beginning of the project by pressing W, Bar one. and now play. Here we go. That is the fade in. The quite opposite effect can be achieved with a fade out. So we want at some point slowly fade out until we reach the end of the item. Now, in order to do that, it's probably the easiest thing to do if we actually go to the end of the item, which we can do by pressing Control, Shift and period, which would be Command, Shift and period on Mac. Let's press that. Bar 33. It skipped us to the end of the item and we will go a little bit back into the item. Bar 32, bar 31, bar 30, bar 20, bar 28. Let's see here. Let's do the Shift A thing again, cause it's important that you have an item selected. One item selected. And now press Control Alt O or Command Option O on Mac. One item faded out from cursor. And if we now play. It's rather slow, but it works, right? So it faded out, it was noticeable. Now, there are some details that I want to show you, and those achieved by selecting the item Shift A again, one item selected, and pressing Shift F2. Media item properties. That will open you the media item properties, and in here we can tap through those various entries. Let's see what we will find, because there are some important settings in here. OK button. That's OK. Position. Edit length. Edit combo box time collapsed. Fade in. Edit 0, 10.000. Here you can see that fade in is set to 10 seconds. That is exactly the time that we accidentally hit when just skipping into the item and then selecting the item and fading in there. And you can change that value if you are unhappy with the 10 seconds and you want it 8 seconds instead, just change this to 8 seconds and you're good to go. But there are some other settings here. There is curve. Edit selected 0, 0.00. The curve. Inverted quadratic fade-in button. There's an inverted quadratic fade-in. Let's see what happens if we click that. Context menu menu. 
And it's important that you click it or press, for example, NVDA enter on this, because if you just hit enter, it will close the dialog instead. Video fade in. Now here you can set it to linear fade in, which would be the typical linear fade that you might expect. By default, it is set to inverted quadratic fade in checked. Inverted quadratic fade in though. Quadratic fade in. You got the usual quadratic fade in. Inverted quartic fade in. And inverted quartic fade in. Quartic fade in. And the usual quartic fade in. Cosine S curve fade in. A cosine S curve fade in. Quartic S curve fade in. A quartic S curve fade in. Linear fade in. And that is it. Now let's just set this to linear fade in by hitting enter. Media item. And we will just close this down. And it's important that you actually close this window by either hitting enter or going to the OK button. Don't just press escape because otherwise you will just revert those changes. You will basically undo everything that you've configured within this dialog. So it's important to hit enter or go to the OK button by shift tabbing and hitting enter on that one. Now, Unsafe. let's go back to the beginning of the project Bar one. and play again and see if you notice a difference. To me, that sounded much more linear, right? But luckily for us, we don't just have fade in, but we also have fade out options. Let's go back in Shift F2, tap a few times, okay, position length, combo, play curve, linear fade in button, and tap a few times more. Fade out. Edit selected 0, 10 .000. So here we've got fade out, same configuration. It's currently set to 10 seconds. You can just change it to whichever value you like best. Curve. Edit selected 0.00. Same curve setting here. Inverted quadratic fade out button. And we've got this setting. Let's click it again. Context menu menu. Go down. Linear fade out. Linear fade out. Hit that. Media. And confirm by pressing enter. Unsafe. Go to the end of the item again because I think it's much easier to notice it when fading out. Bar 33. Go back a bit. Bar, 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 bar 28. And play. For me, this fade out was much easier to notice. The previous fade out was more in the realm of fading out rather slow and just the end will fade out quickly, which might not exactly be what you wanted to do. And this is how you quickly fade in and out of items and you can use it whenever you want within your projects. There's a feature which is currently located at pressing shift Alt X, which is Shift Option X on Mac. Crossfade on. This option targets automatic crossfading on and off. Let's listen to what it does by pressing F12. Shortcut help on. That is the shortcut help that is baked into Osara, so you can press it whenever you like and just hit whichever key combination you want, and Osara will tell you what the key combination actually does. Let's hit Shift Alt or Option X. Options. Auto crossfade media items when editing. Auto crossfade media items when editing. That means that as long as this option is turned on, whenever you take items and make them overlap on the same track, Reaper will make them fade into each other. So while the one item will fade out, the other will fade in so that they seamlessly blend into each other, if that makes sense. Shortcut help off. If you don't like this behavior, turn it off with Shift Alt X. Crossfade off. That is how you fade in and out in Reaper. Some really easy ways, just pressing Control Alt I and O or Command Option I and O on Mac. And you know about the media item properties where you can change all those fade in and out times manually. You can change the fade in and out curve. And you know that pushing items into each other, overlapping them on the same track will cross fade them unless you turn the option off or on, the default behavior can be toggled within the settings, just give it a go. And that is all you need to know about fading. There are obviously more advanced topics of fading. One of the more well-known examples is how to actually do a voiceover where, for example, the music or the sound effects will automatically get quieter whenever you are speaking. I have done a video about that already. That is called side chaining, and I will link to the video in the video description and in the info card. Thanks for watching this video. If you've got any questions, ideas, comments in general, let me know in the video description below the video. And until then, I will wish you all the best. Until next week, bye bye.